The New York Post has put another article up trying to slam us hoax guys here. And the astronaut that they're using is from the European Space Agency. And his name is Thomas Pesquet. His parents would be in diapers when uh, Apollo took off. So he knows exactly, you know, he's he was there for the show. But... The New York Post, of course, they don't respond to us, but they get a different guy to write an article because the other ones obviously won't. So this person is Aaron Keller, right, that wrote this article. That's just from the New York Post. I don't know if they use freelance writers or whatever they use, but that's that's what they're doing with this particular article. And the New York Post will not respond to us, so they just jump their game on uh, throwing these people in there, right? That other journalist who uh, wrote up the article about it hasn't responded to me. And I wrote to them as well. And to the editor. I wrote to the online editor as well. Well, they obviously don't know what to say when they get challenged on this. They haven't done their research. They haven't done their checking out what's supposed to be happening. They haven't done the basic journalistic response, which is to check out what is being said. No, you know what's interesting, the comments that are in the section right now, is that why is it they're putting all of this equipment on Artemis, this radiation equipment, the detectors and such, when it was done and dusted 55 years ago? Now, why are they starting this all over from scratch again? Yeah, why is there a concern? I also sent you a link to that for Artemis, right, which is showing one, two, and three each of their flight paths are there listed and of course all of them go straight through the Van Allen belt just off the equator whatever degree the moon is off the equator they're still doing it exactly the same way yeah. however Artemis was scrubbed you know those 35 year old seals that didn't leak well they still haven't done anything about them because it's the same damn seals so you can see how much they've advanced in their technology on seals and basically they're using the same uh, solid fuel boosters as they were on the space shuttle. Yeah, and also the space shuttle engines. Right, but over this past weekend we had several coronal mass ejections from the sun, Yeah, which were considered highly extreme. Now, if those coronal mass ejections were somewhere in their flight path, they would need to be concerned about it. Yeah, of course they were. And the only thing you hear from NASA and on the news is, oh, well, there's a weather and we might be struck by lightning and that the wind shear might blow us off course a little bit. Well, I guess if you're going to land in the Atlantic, that's all you have to worry about is the weather, right? If you're going to the moon, you'd want to be concerned about the effects because even though it's unmanned, there are thousands of documents showing how these things knock out satellites and everything else out and that's not in the Van Allen belts but they plan on going through it and at no time have they mentioned the increased concern about traveling through the Van Allen belts with this equipment and particularly at the highest level of a coronal mass ejection and not only that the activity stays for weeks in the Van Allen belts it doesn't just dissipate that quickly, and they don't mention that either. No, yeah, and also they tend not to talk about the South Atlantic anomaly, which is where the radiation comes really quite close to Earth, about 100 miles above the Earth's surface. They don't mention the South Atlantic anomaly at all, but they also don't mention the fact that the International Space Station, when it orbits through that area over Brazil and the South Atlantic, they have to switch their computers off and protect them because they would be damaged by the radiation that they would be flying into. And they're nowhere near the belts. <laughs> no, they're not near the belt. <laughs> they're near the South Atlantic anomaly, which is radiation, which yeah. is similar to what's in the belts. You have to figure, if you're planning a trip somewhere and there's going to be extreme weather or whatever, or hurricanes or whatever, you might want to cancel the trip because there might be a twister they're going to blow you off the road nasa doesn't mention the fact that those solar mass ejections have occurred and that that would be a reason for canceling a launch date 
Of course it would. But if they're not going that direction, if they're just going to launch one up so it disappears and crashes in the Atlantic, then it's not on their radar. The only thing they're worried about is whether the vehicle gets hit by lightning and if the jet stream blows them off course a little bit and Greenpeace picks them up. Because <laughs> they've got the rest of that area out there completely cordoned off for the launch. Well, they're not going to get away with it this time. No, they're not. It's not just us. There are hundreds of people watching what's going on. Because we're now much more capable of keeping up to date in real time with NASA. Yes, and why aren't they releasing the transmission signals so everybody can track them? Why aren't there independent cameras on board that vehicle so that media stations can record it independently yeah. of them. Doesn't happen. They don't do that. When Robert and I were looking at uh, CBS Cronkite launch and we came across that animation yeah. on there, I just happened to pause it in a particular spot and it said five hours and 30 minutes till the lunar landing, right? Right. And the animation is showing the rocket engine still thrusting. And I thought, well, you know, that's fine and dandy. But these things would have taken a lot of time to create that animation. It would have taken months of work. Yeah. And why wasn't NASA involved in that? Because they would at least look at that and say, no, at five hours in, it would be this. And then they're only showing the command module without its stage and fuel systems and everything else, just the command module. And you can see that by the curve of it in the thing, that that's where the heat shields are. That's the rocket engine is now coming out of that. So NASA didn't have any involvement with that whatsoever. Okay, it all depends on which video you're looking at, because the other one that I looked at, they did a full animation and they got it right, except for one thing. At five minutes to touchdown, they had the LM tilted on a, about a 70 degree angle with the flames gushing out of it at the speed of sound. But then before that, they have the LM coming down straight like this, and then they turn the eclipse to another cutaway, and all of a sudden it's like this on an angle. If it was like that, it would be heading back out to sea. Well, because it was all animation, it was all magic formula, it was the way they expected it to be. Because if you listen to the commentary between Houston and the command module, presumably Armstrong or Alder and one of the guys, there are no delays on any of the communication. Okay, Charlie, we're in the land. The uh, tracking index mark is the same. What do we copy? And there should be a 1.2 second delay each way between the moon and Earth. And there isn't. But it's funny because sometimes there is and sometimes there isn't. Sometimes they're answering like they're on a walkie-talkie on Earth, and other times you've got to sit there and wonder, like, what's going on here? Yeah, who's talking to who? Why is there suddenly a long delay when it should be exactly the same for all communication? Columbia, Columbia this is Houston reading you loud and clear, over. Roger, the EVA is progressing beautifully. Uh, I believe they're setting up the flag now. Well, the phone call from Nixon, somebody said, oh, well, they edited it for content to make it more presentable to the media. I watched it live. You were around, I was around. There should have been a delay. Yeah. It sounded like they were in the next room. Just across the hall. Yeah. And even then, maybe that's what Gus Grissom was talking about. We can't even talk across the hall sometimes. That's right. It's the magic zone. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. I think you're right, Robert. NASA is now really concerned that there are so many people very informed about Apollo and very informed about space travel who are watching what is going on. And they're not going to get fooled this time. Fool mm -hmm. me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. We're not going to get fooled a second time. Well, yeah, that's true, exactly. But why would they go and add all these sensors again and be going all over the same material? This is 
Apollo 2.0. They're doing exactly the same thing they did back then. Well, if you've conquered something, you don't go back and redo it from scratch. It's not like they're taking this up from the middle now. They're going right back to square one with this radiation business. And I mean right back to square one. Why did they need to have solid rocket boosters on this thing? Where are those F1 engines? They should have been developed to a much higher level. How come those solid boosters are 35-year-old technology with leaky seals? The same as the Challenger. And then people need to understand, Orion has a computer in it that was built in 1987. A 486. That's before a Pentium computer. They probably have their own software for that. And it probably is, in fact, fast enough to do the calculations to run the guidance system. The speed of the computer would to do mathematical calculations is fast enough to do that. But it does not have the capability to do the automated controls to fire all of the retro rockets or anything else or any of the other stages needed to be done to go along with that. It can do the calculations, but it can't do the rest of the work. But can it do the navigation to work out where it is in space and where it needs to be in space? The machine would not be capable of firing the equipment. It would be able to do the calculations, yes. Okay, fair enough. Even the circuitry itself, you're limited to the amount of RAM that you can put into that system. Yeah. But what about this radiation? What happens if this solar event that just happened, if they would have launched it, wouldn't that have wiped out a lot of that, those chips? It would have wiped every sensor they had out on it. It would have yeah, been done. It's amazing how it takes out satellites, but it's not going to take this out. Do you think that could have something to do with the delays on the launch? For I've been spending all the time looking for it, and they just claim that there's a leak, there's weather, there's this and there's that, right? fuel leak problems and stuff like that. No mention of the belts. Okay. And if that's in their flight path, if that's part of their program, where they're headed to, it should have been a concern and it should have been mentioned. They could have at least said, oh, we just had a major solar eruption there. We need three weeks for it to calm down. Yeah. Well, that's what they got themselves. Because are they taking the rocket back to the vehicle assembly building now? They did, and they had to swap one of the engines out because they couldn't repair the other one. So out the engine came and then another one went in. But they should just take it straight to the museum. The one that launched in 2014 is already in the museum. Well, that's right. This one just needs to go up, come down on the parachutes, and go to the museum. It's a very expensive program. It's almost, a, it's almost as expensive as the Apollo program. Was it $90 billion they've spent so far? And they haven't even got off the ground yet. You know, what are they playing at? What are they actually doing? Armando Balance, at the end of his comment, he said, don't even get me going on that. Don't even get me started. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? I mean, maybe you could come up with something interesting. Are any of the NASA parrots c contributing to this discussion at all? Uh, well, no, we don't see them on the YouTube channel anymore. Unfortunately, our comments tend to blow the feathers right off them. Do you realize that not one person anywhere in that comment section has mentioned anything about those shadows changing direction at the sweep of the camera? There is not one comment about that anywhere. No. Nope. Because if they did mention it, that blows the whole Apollo story wide open. A very important piece of film that you've identified there, showing different shadow lengths, where they should be the same length, no matter what's happening. But it's the direction they're changing. The camera starts on the left and it pans to the right. And as it's going, the shadow direction is changing. <laughs> yeah, I know. And then you have that background mat that's sitting oh. there, that wall screen. And that's supposed to be a really steep hill. And it's got really short shadows on it when they should be incredibly long. Of course or they even should. part of it should be shaded right out from the direction that the light source is coming from. I had another look at that this morning. I wanted to blow it up and get a cleaner look at that. Yes, that is, that shadow. A part, or not the whole thing, but a part of that shadow is on the wall. It's on the wall. Oh, that it's one is on, on the wall. wall. It is on the wall. It's pretty incredible how they got away with that stuff. Well, because nobody knew what to look for. Nobody had the slightest idea at the time. We're talking over 50 years ago.
Nobody had any idea that they were supposed to be looking for fabrication. They thought they were looking at reality. They thought they were looking at NASA being honest. That's a hard line to cross mentally for a lot of people. It is. It's a line that quite a few people can't cross. Because as soon as they cross it once, they can't go back. As soon as they have the slightest doubt that Apollo was fabricated, as soon as they see something which convinces them that Apollo was a fabrication, not a reality, the whole thing falls apart. Yeah, it's like the Wizard of Oz. Once that curtain's open, you can never unsee it again, 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 again.